Hi everyone. I would like to begin by asking you all a question. So how many of you know someone or if you yourself have had a concussion while playing a sport? Um, I'm asking you this because this is the topic I'm going to be covering today. I'm going to be talking about concussions and sports, the sports they happen most often in, the likelihood of getting them in each sport, and then what it looks like afterwards, like how to take care of yourself and how that can really affect you. Um, so a concussion is simply a brain injury when you get a severe blow to the head. So concussions, you know, most likely always happen in sports or, you know, it can happen outside of, you know, sport activities, car accidents, many things like that, just like a severe blow to the head. Um, according to CDC estimates, the 2017 Youth Risk Behavior Survey found that 15.1% of students reported getting having a concussion and then 6.2 reported actually having two concussions and I would like to point out that these are just the statistics that like students actually um like told like they actually um reported these statistics I know from firsthand experience I did have a concussion in high school and many students along myself like we did not want to tell like our trainer or you know our coach that you know we don't want to report this because that would result in you know our season being cut short or, you know, having to miss a game, but, um, that's, like, the least of your worries when you have, like, a brain injury like this, so, um, brain injuries cause more deaths in sports than any other sport-related injuries, which I think is absolutely crazy considering, you know, like, so many athletes tear their ACLs and have, there's just so many injuries that people, um, go through that brain injuries are the number one fatality cause. Um, three sports that you're most likely to get a concussion in is number one, football. I think that's a given. And then I'm going to have a chart later that shows these statistics. Um, soccer and then basketball. So I want to touch on um, football first, but the likelihood of getting a concussion and how it happens is what I'm going to start with. So for football, um, these brain injuries in football account for 65 to 95 percent of all fatalities. And that number is extremely high. Like, that is, like, crazy. That's almost 100% of people, you know, getting a brain injury, and that's causing, like, their death. Um, football injuries associated with the brain occur at one per every five and a half games. So every five and a half games, someone's getting a concussion. And, you know, football, like, in pro, they have, like, games several times a week, so they're not even making it, like, two weeks without getting a concussion, which I think is kind of crazy. Again, considering all the injuries that, you know, athletes sustain throughout their season like that's just such a high rate the main reason for concussions in football I think is pretty self-explanatory it's the direct contact like hitting head-on with each other so helmet to helmet contact and you guys are little like they're literally just tackling each other so um this causes the jarring of the head and then you're like your neck whips back and then this causes your this is your brain your skull like they touch and that is what a concussion is like your brain bruising. It's a concussion. So, um, I think that's pretty interesting. So I'm going to touch on soccer next. And this is the sport that I played in high school when I had a concussion. And, um, in the past it's been said that soccer is not like traditionally like a sport that you would get, you know, a concussion in, but, um, it's, they're definitely changing. The rates are absolutely changing. And, um, it's definitely one of the top sports now. So, Um, As many as 22% of soccer players, their injuries are concussions, so that's definitely not as high as the fatality rate. This isn't a fatality rate, but 22% of only concussions, only concussions. And then I do have this, I want to show you guys this picture. So um, this is what's happening when you have a concussion. So like your brain is literally like rotating and it's like hitting the back of your skull right here. And it's like twisting inside your head. So your head is, your skull and your brain are literally hitting the back of your skull right here. It's a blast, blast brain injury. So I think that that's very important to know because I feel like a lot of people might not even know like, you know, yeah, a concussion, you know, from a blow to the head, but your brain is literally moving in your head. So um, the main reason for concussion in soccer is for my instance, it was I hit my head on the ground from, um, force of someone else so that's one of the examples but directly colliding into someone's head because in football I know it's obviously much worse the rates are much worse but you guys have helmets on but people just like are hitting heads direct contact and then getting hit in the head with the ball is another one that's really a high 
cause of a concussion because people are not paying attention or they're just, it's unavoidable. Um, the one that when you're getting indirectly hit with the ball, it's, um, people do not know how to properly head the ball, which that's another issue. That's something like after I got my concussion, I was so scared to head the ball because I didn't want to do it wrong. And then I want to touch on basketball is the last word I'll touch on. And I was kind of shocked about basketball. I didn't expect basketball to be one of the ones because I kind of thought baseball would be one of the higher rates because, I mean, you guys, you do wear helmets, but you guys are, people are just like throwing balls back and forth each other. So, um, concussions in basketball account for more than 9% of athletes in the ages 8 to 19. And then I actually found a statistic from the NBA officials reports and it's saying, it said that there are 189 concussions in 153 players. So this is averaging 110 concussions per season. So that's a lot. Like I said, in, like in football, people can't make it two weeks without getting concussions. So this, these rates are a lot lower, but they're still in the top, the top ranges. Um, main reasons for concussion in basketball are falling and hitting your head on the court. So just like soccer, it's, you know, common, common. And then a direct blow to the head with the ball or someone else's head. So again, the same, kind of the same idea. Um, aftermath of a concussion. So this is what I think is most important. Like, you know, you're getting, you have a concussion. I think it's the most important in the entire process, how you're taking care of yourself. So treatment of a concussion consists of pain medication and then, um, altering your daily routine. So, you know, not being on your phone as much, which I know kind of sucks and it can, can be tempting because we're teenagers and that's what we do is we get on our phones and we're on social media, but that's something that you should definitely cut down on because your brain needs that rest. Another thing that I was given as a piece of advice was stay in like a dark room because the light is not going to help you. It's not going to feel good. And that's also another way that your brain can heal. So after talking about all of the sports, I wanted to point out that this entire chunk right here that I outlined in blue, this is football. These are the, the rates of football, the rates of getting a concussion in each sport. And you can tell the football is literally over half. So I think that's just so interesting because it's dangerous. And I think a lot of people know that. So I think, I thought this graph was really interesting because I know it's, it's really showing it. So, um, in conclusion, you cannot prevent a concussion because sports are always going to be here and they're never going to go away and concussions are inevitable. You know, when you're playing, you're playing that contact sport, but I think it's important that you're, you know how to make the likelihood a little bit less. So wearing a helmet, wearing the appropriate headgear that fits you and just making sure to take care of yourself. And signs to look for if you're unsure of, you know, like, why I'm, what's going on. If you cannot stay conscious for, like, more than um, 30 seconds, you know, vomiting, all that stuff. So that's all super important to be looking out for. So I really wanted you guys to be informed on getting the facts of getting a concussion during a sport and how it can really affect your daily life. So I hope that this helped. Thank you for watching.